Okay, good uh, evening everyone. Pastor Brett here. Just a um, really quick answer to um, Pastor Joseph Dunn. Um, he, uh, in response to uh, my video on the KJV All the Way, um, he said that he sure does appreciate my stance on the KJV, so that's a blessing. So he doesn't want to cause me to do a video with controversy. But he heard me mention that I was mid-trib, um, referring to the rapture. Um, I do believe in a mid-tribulation rapture. And he said he was just wondering if I could do a study on that, if I haven't already. Um, if that's too much of a controversial subject to discuss, I completely understand. Thanks for putting out so much awesome content. I've gleaned so much. Uh, great info from you. Well, um, Pastor Joe, thank you very much, um, but I thank the Lord. Give him praise. It's all about Jesus, um, and uh, so I'm thankful for the things that he's shown me through his word. Um, yes, I do believe in a mid-tribulation rapture, um, but as far as it being controversial, um, it's only controversial in the mind of those who desire to create controversy. Uh, the Word of God is clear uh, to me, and I can only teach you what I believe is truth. Um, does that mean that I cannot learn any more about particular subjects or topics in Scripture? Nope, doesn't mean that at all. I am open. Uh, God showed me a long time ago, told me this, and I'll never forget these words. He said very clearly to me, the greatest teacher is the one that can always be taught. So um, in order for me to be uh, a, uh, um, an effective pastor and counselor, uh, I have to be able to counsel you uh, with the same humility that I encourage you to exhibit. Um, and I, I have to be able to receive um, truth uh, if I expect you to receive the same. So. Having said that, um, I can only teach you what I believe about this. I, my forte is not um, eschatology. Um, so I don't um, suppose to uh, have uh, an uh, end-all understanding of eschatology. Um, never said that, never will. But there are some things about eschatology that I do understand. And my stand is clear and strong. Um, I am, though, however, have learned to be the palm tree in the wind um, as opposed to the strong, sturdy oak. Um, an oak tree will snap and break and it'll die. But a palm tree bends in the way and, and snaps back up when the wind goes away. Um, so, you know, I, I have to have a bend but don't break attitude. Um, I don't compromise with anything that I believe to be truth, but by the same token, uh, I am open to learn and I know that there is so much more for us to agree upon in Scripture that um, we should not um, divide over any one particular topic. Um, pre-trib, mid-trib, post-trib. I never considered post-tribulation rapture because um, I don't see that in Scripture at all. Um, I can understand why some people teach a pre-tribulation rapture, but I don't agree with that because it eliminates um, the purpose for Jesus even giving us any warning at all. But why would there be any warning in Scripture at all that the only people that read the Bible and believe it are born-again believers? Um, we are the only ones that can understand it. Um, and it's because it's a spiritually um, interpreted book. Amen? So why in the world would the Bible be filled with warning about um, the end times um, and that Jesus himself showed us things that we would see, signs of the times. While no man knows the hour or the day, uh, if I were to predict the exact day of Jesus' coming, beware, don't believe that, all right? But if I tell you what I believe Scripture says about um, whether or not it's going to be before the tribulation 
um, halfway through the tribulation or after the tribulation period, well then I'm coming from Scripture, and so you need to um, read the Scripture, study the Scripture, and then um, search it out for yourself. Okay? Um, so, um, having said that, I'm going to open with prayer, and then I'm going to start with Daniel chapter 9. Um, so, this will be um, a, uh, a sermon for you, if you will. And I'll say, Father, thank you for your word. Bless us now, Father God, with your word, with your presence. Keep us from all evil and teach us, Lord God, as we read your word. Help us to understand it so that we can apply it to our life and, Lord, be able to teach others. Thank you, thank you, thank you for what we'll see in your word. And we'll give you thanks and praise for it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hope you said amen. Um, so, yeah, Pastor Joe, that, um, that is uh, a good question and one that I'll answer. Um, I, will, uh, I will say that if you read Daniel chapter 9, um, you'll see uh, something very interesting. And I'm going to read the, um, from the center of all biblical prophecy. All right, all biblical prophecy centers around these um, three verses, four verses. Okay, let's see, 25, 26, 27. Yeah, three verses of Scripture. Daniel 9, 25. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah from the time of building and restoring Jerusalem until the Messiah comes, all right, he says, there, uh, the prince, uh, Messiah the prince, shall be seven weeks and three score and two weeks. All right, so this is a total of um, 69 weeks. And uh, this is broken up into um, 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 two periods here. The word weeks in the Hebrew is Shabuah. And Shabuah is weeks of years. So we're talking about a period of seven years. And then 60, then it says three score and two weeks. That's 62 weeks times seven. All right. So that is, was uh, um, the total of 483 years, I believe it was. Yeah. And seven made a total of 490 years. So we're talking about a total of 490 years until Messiah the Prince. All right, now listen, he says, um, 483 years, from 444 B.C. until 483 years later, Messiah the Prince, and then the seven years is the second, that's the tribulation period, by the way. Um, so you got 483 years from the time of the edict of, uh, of the king, Artaxerxes, said, you can go and you can rebuild Jerusalem. That was around 444 B.C. When you do the math, 483 years turns out to be the time that the Messiah, the prince, was cut off. Um, so it says, uh, and it shall be built again, uh, the wall even in troubles times. And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, verse 26, but not for himself and for the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end thereof shall be with a flood, and unto the end of the war desolations are determined. Now some people have said, stop, they said, that's when Nero came in and destroyed Jerusalem, and put, and that's fulfilled. There, there, in scripture there are, there are um, dual roles for some prophetic events. There are places when the uh, prophecy was fulfilled at one point, but is yet to be fulfilled in the spirit realm at another. Uh, there are some places where um, some people say that uh, the prophecy about the coming Messiah, Jesus, was actually a prophecy about a particular king at that time that Isaiah prophesied uh, of the the coming of Jesus, the first heaven. No, sorry. <laughs> and I'll have to say the same thing here, sorry. Because the math and the prediction and the prophecy, and there's only one Messiah, and we know that that's Jesus. So this is talking about the coming of Jesus and his 
being cut off, being crucified, all right, was approximately 483 years. So, the math is just way too close for anyone to argue this point. Um, after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off. Okay, we read that verse 26. Now verse 27 says, And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. All right? This is a period of seven years. All right? And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. Going to put an end to all sacrifices in the midst of the week. What is that? How many times do you see in Scripture three and a half years mentioned? You see it in Revelation. You see it in Ezekiel. I think you even see it in Daniel. I'm not sure to make make, make certain, but um, you'll see it mentioned uh, three hundred um, um, the the days. Um, I can't remember the specific amount of days, but um, it's recorded as three and a half years and three and a half years, all right? So the tribulation period is a period of seven years broken in two three and a half year periods, all right? Why is it broken in two three and a half year periods? And Messiah comes in the middle, all right, uh, or, or excuse me, the uh, devil coming up. The, this is the abomination of desolation now in verse 27 that Jesus spoke of in Matthew 24, which we're going to look at, all right? The abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet. All right. So here in verse 27, and he shall confirm the covenant for many, with many, for one week. All right. And in the midst of the week, he shall, who's he? That's the Antichrist, shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate. There's the abomination of desolation. Who shall make it desolate? The devil. He's going to make it desolate. Not God. The devil. All right? Satan is going to make it desolate. And even until the consummation and that determined shall be poured out upon, poured upon the desolate. All right? So the, the devil is going to uh, take his place on the throne claiming to be God. All right? Um, you're going to see that in, in Peter. Um, Peter talks about that. Uh, is it uh, Paul in Thessalonians? Excuse me. Um, so Paul in Thessalonians says this. And this is Second Thessalonians chapter 2. So we'll go there and then we'll look at Matthew 24. All right? We'll go there we'll look at Matthew 24 after this. Let, mo let no man deceive you by any means. He says, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, all right, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he, as God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. That's the abomination of desolation. Remember ye not that when I was with you, yet with you, I told you these things? Okay. And now ye know that what withholdeth, that's the Holy Spirit, he is withholding, that he might be revealed in his time. Okay. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work, only he who now letteth will let until he is taken out of the way. The Holy Spirit is keeping all things in its proper place until he is taken out of the way. When the Holy Spirit, when the church is taken out of the way, when the church is raptured, the Holy Spirit goes with us because he is within us. He is here for us. He is not going to remain here after we're gone. The devil is going to take complete control of everything, and there's going to be massive havoc, all right? Complete and utter uh, um, um, confusion and destruction because he's going to have complete control of the world. He's going to be revealed, and everyone's going to see it, all right? But those that remain will see that. We're going to be gone at that point. Now... How do I know this? Listen, um, 
so we know that, let's establish this point first, that the devil is going to sit on the throne and claim to be God at the halfway point of the seven-year tribulation period. Now, remember, there's two types of tribulation spoken about in this period. There is a tribulation period, the seven years, and then there is the great tribulation, the second half, the three and a half years, the latter three and a half years. Watch what Jesus says in Matthew 24. Um, and uh, let's go over to Matthew 24. And in Matthew 24, Jesus has these words for us. Mm -hmm. Get there. I had to run upstairs and get my war horse out because this is the one that I have all of this marked out in. All right, so Matthew 24. Um, now, some people say that this is for the Jews. I find that to be very hard to believe because the Jews don't believe this. All right? This is not speaking about the Jews because the Jews don't read this book and believe in it. So how can you say it's for the Jews? That doesn't make sense to me. Listen, verse 3, And he sat upon the Mount of Olives, and the disciples came to him and said, privately saying, Tell us when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? So they want to know, Lord, what's your eschatological view? Tell us, teach us about this. Jesus said, answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. So we say, well, the skeptic will say, well, there's been wars and rumors of wars for centuries and thousands of years since the beginning of man. Yes, indeed, uh, but not in such an escalated fashion. These, the, these um, prophetic statements by Jesus all right, are in an ongoing escalated fashion. When you, when you read this in the Greek, you see this. All right, now, when Jesus is talking about this, he's talking about this in an escalated fashion. And I, I saw um, a map once. I wish I had this map. I, I, I should pull it up and probably make a copy of it. I could probably find it. But it was a map that showed um, epicenters were red dots and red lines were fault lines uh, on the earth. It was a map of the earth. It was, a, of course, a flat map. And um, it showed red dots as epicenters and red lines as fault lines. They showed one map below uh, or above was in the, like the 1950s, and there was a few red dots and red lines here and there. And then they showed the map in the 1990s. And this map was current at the time that I saw this. It was probably around 1993. And when I looked at the map in the 1990s, the map was covered with red dots and red lines. Covered with them. And it's even worse today. This was the, the, the mid-90s. It's even worse today. Um, the, 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 all of the earthquakes and all of the natural disasters that you hear taking place and all of the wars and the rumors of wars. and you, Watch out. I mean, it's just begun. Beware, it's just begun. So here Jesus says, nation shall rise against nation. Now those are ethnicities. Those are not kingdoms. Um, those are not um, geological kingdoms. Those are ethnicities. Nation is the Greek ethnos. These are people. These are races. This is racial confusion, folks. Please listen to this. Nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. So now you're also going to have, you know, Russia against the U.S. and the U.S. against China. And, you know, it's just going to get nuts. It, it's, you think it's, it's bad now? Stick around. Hallelujah. Um, now Jesus is telling us all these things. He's telling his disciples this. And he prayed that, you know, God... Jesus prayed in the garden that God would, you know, bless us 
you know, like he blessed them and, you know, pray that uh, others hear uh, our, uh, that others hear their word and, and so on and so forth. I mean, you know, th this book is for us. It's for believers, believers at this time, because, of course, the disciples were long gone. They've been long gone. It's been all, over 2,000 years. It's just been a, a drop in the bucket for the Lord, though. But, I mean, you know, for us, we may not see this. This may happen long after we're gone. I don't know, though. Things are escalating and things are pointing towards these warnings are starting to be seen. So listen on. Um, he says, Nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines. Mm -hmm. That's starvations. Those are, you know, no food. Uh, pestilences. There you go. All right. What, what's happening right now? All right. And earthquakes in divers or various places. Escalated fashion now. All these, Jesus says, are just the beginning of sorrows. That's pretty scary if you don't know Christ. Verse 9, Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise, and shall deceive many. All right, we've seen a whole lot of false prophets uh, in our time. Uh, at least in, in my time, baby boomers have seen, you know, um, uh, we've seen uh, uh, Jim Jones, David Koresh, um, you know, who can forget, you know, Charles Manson, uh, and John Applegate, and um, I mean, you know, uh, we've seen a whole host of false Christs and false prophets. You know, um, you, you got... Uh, um, uh, what's his name, Louis Farrakhan, uh, and you have uh, um, so many others that are speaking and saying that they are the Messiah. The Pope declared himself to be the vicar of Christ. Are you kidding me? He considers himself to be the one that you are to go to. I mean, you know, it's just beginning, though, just beginning. He says, and because iniquity shall abound... The love of many shall wax cold. world's not getting better, folks. It's getting worse. The world is getting worse. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Uh, to the end of what? To the end of the tribulation period. All right? I have to believe that. I don't believe that he's going to leave us to the end, to the post-tribulation mentality. But, you know, I don't rule that out. I don't rule any of it out. But I, I go with what I believe God has shown me. And I stick with it until he shows me something else. If he wants to show me something else, I'll see it. And I'll thank him for it. But listen to this. He says, when you, he says in this gospel of the kingdom, verse 14, Matthew 24, 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, all ethnicities, and then shall the end come. Well, the gospel has not yet been preached to all ethnicities. There are places in the world that people have not been able to hear the gospel as of yet. There are tribes and peoples in the jungles and deep in the forests and deep in the mountains and people that have just never heard the gospel of Jesus Christ yet. So, um, our duty is to preach the gospel. Just preach the gospel. All right? Then the end will come. He says, When ye therefore shall see, this is perceive, this is to, to perceive, to be able to see it and understand it with comprehension. When you therefore shall see the abomination to witness it, the abomination of desolation, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. Stand your ground. Stand your ground in Jerusalem. Stand your ground right where you are. Stand in that holy place. He says, 
whoso readeth, let him understand. Then let them which are in Judea flee into the mountains. And bear in mind, when Jesus is preaching, he's preaching to the people in that world at that time. All right? But we have to apply it to us for our time here today because none of these things have come to pass yet. So we have to know that they are still future tense. And so we trust the Word of God because all that has or was um, prophesied to come to pass up until the time of Christ has come to pass. I mean, you know, and so anything that is left over and still yet to be fulfilled, we have to trust that it will be fulfilled. Well, the Word of God is trustworthy. And Jesus has proven himself. God's proven himself far beyond anything that we need to understand that he is who he said he is. All right, so we know that Jesus all right, will return. And we know that he will come to take us away. But again, um, this isn't something that should be, uh, there shouldn't be a dividing line. There shouldn't be a division about it. There shouldn't be any controversy about this. Um, so uh, he says, Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. Don't worry about it. Time to go. You're gone. Don't worry about it. He says, uh, Woe unto them who are with child and to those who give suck in those days. It's not going to be a good time to be having babies in those days. He said, But pray ye that your flight not be in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. For then shall be great tribulation. So here's the difference between the tribulation, the seven years, and the latter half, the great tribulation. All right? Such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But, listen, here's the key. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. All right? So we are going to see some of it, but we're not going to see it all. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. For there shall be false Christs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Possible, but not possible. If you are truly saved, and you truly know Jesus, and you truly believe his word, you're not going to be duped. You're not going to be deceived. Because you're going to know what this is saying to you. Behold, I have told you before. Why did he tell us before? Because he wants us to see. He wants us to recognize it. Can't possibly be for those Jews back then in his day. Because if it was, then we would have no need of this book. We would have no need of this book. It would just be a good book that gave us good guide in life. But if this is all fulfilled, we're wasting our time. So anyone tells you that this is already fulfilled, don't believe that. Behold, I've told you before, wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he's in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he's in the secret chambers, believe it not. For as the lightning comes out of the east and shines even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. All right? So it's just going to be like, he's gonna, he tells you later on that he, he's going to knock out the sun, the sun will be dark and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from the heaven. All right, and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man coming in heaven in the clouds with power and great glory. But here in this verse, all right, he says, As the lightning comes out of the east and shines even unto the west, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. Because he's going to light up the sky. That's why he's going to knock out the sun. So every eye will see it in all of the earth. Um, Brother Moeen over there in the Middle East you're going to see it even though you're sleeping right uh, or you're waking up right now while we're getting ready to go to bed you're getting ready you're starting to see sunlight all right it's dark here gonna knock out the sun you're gonna be lights out and we're already lights out over here and then poof he's gonna light up the sky and every eye will see it well how are we gonna see it here and you see it over there at the same time. Because, uh, folks, um, God is uh, omnipresent. 
He's everywhere at the same time. How he can be that, I don't know. But that he is, I know. I know. He's um, he's omnipresent. He's everywhere at the same time. All right? And so every eye will see it. Um, and then he says in verse 29, Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun shall be darkened, the moon shall not give her light, the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Now watch, how do I know this is going to be the rapture and not the second coming, the second advent? Because, verse 31 tells us, And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. That's the call, baby. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. You know, he goes on and he talks about this a little bit more. But there you have it right there. All right. It was at the mid-tribulation point that, Three and a half years and three and a half years. Why is the seven years broken up into two three and a half year periods? All right? Why? Because he is coming in the middle. Tribulation period, then great tribulation. We see it right here in the text. Let the text, the context, interpret the text. So, in the context of all of Matthew 24, you see Jesus talking about this and the Antichrist coming and setting himself up on the throne. And we saw that there uh, in, uh, in uh, Thessalonians. Now, listen to what Peter says, all right? Because Peter has a little bit of eschatology in him, too. Hallelujah. And so I'm thankful for that. Um, I'm thankful for, you know, the understanding that God gives in this word. Um, but again, um, am I the end all of, you know, biblical understanding? Nope. Nope. Never said it. Never intended to make you feel that way. If you think that about me, um, second guess yourself because... Um, I'm still growing, I'm still learning, I'm still um, understanding things, and uh, um, I thank the Lord for that. Um, but I know what I know, and am convinced um, of what I've learned to this point. Um, um, so, uh, Peter um, mentions um, us... Um, Thank you, Jesus. And this is the only problem that I have with preaching from memory um, because I'm answering these questions off the cuff. I have to respond from memory. Um, but uh, had I taken the time to put this together, had I known this question would arise, um, I would have gladly taken the time to put this together and then um, responded to it. Um, but uh, Jesus is, um, uh, when he returns, he's going to um, take us out of the way. And then after the great tribulation period, we're going to be, we're going to return with him. In power and great glory and we are going to then get involved in the battle of you know all battles and uh, then there's going to be um, according to scripture there's going to be a um, a uh, a um, millennial reign of Christ here on earth uh, going to give then the people that remain a, a last chance um, the Jews that remain a last chance uh, at that time it's believed that all of um, uh, the Jews uh, that remain will then recognize him and then will come and will surrender to him um, but um, 
Here it is. Thank you, Jesus. Second Peter 3. He says this, but the day of the Lord, verse 10, 2 Peter 3, 10, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Hallelujah. So we have uh, Roy Zedon. Roy Zedon, this is uh, a loud noise, the great noise. Hallelujah. It's some people believe it's going to be a nuclear holocaust because the elements will melt with fervent heat. Um, it's it's just, it's going to be brutal. Um, and I don't believe that God is going to allow his children to remain for that. Um, I believe that we will be gone, period. But to now to teach that we are going to leave in the beginning, um, I can show you what the scripture says, and why I don't believe in a pre-tribulation rapture. I don't believe in a pre-tribulation rapture because most pre-tribbers take Revelation 4.1 and that is their proof text that we are going to leave in the beginning. After this I looked, Revelation 4.1, and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was, as it were, a trumpet talking with me, which said, come up hither. And so they say, that's it. See, that's the rapture. Are you kidding me? Wait a second. This is John, all right, hearing from the angel. And the angel says to John, come up hither, and I will show you things that which must be hereafter. Then John says, and immediately I, not we, he says, I was in the spirit. And behold, a throne was set in heaven and one that sat on the throne. And so then you, because this is the revelation of Jesus Christ to John. You know, this is so. How can you say that that's the rapture? It just doesn't make no sense to me. I mean, some serious scholars ascribe to this. I don't get it. Um, but uh, to teach believers that there's going to be a um, a pre-tribulation rapture is to eliminate. I mean, really, literally. It's it's not to eliminate, but um, what's the word I'm thinking of? To to um, build a false hope. You're deceiving them in in that you're teaching them that they're not going to see any of it. And when all of these things start taking place in the earth, and we start seeing all of the stuff that Jesus said we're going to see, when we start seeing all this stuff happen. People are going to start freaking out. They're going to start losing their minds. They're going to be like, wait a second, wait a second. What happened to all those promises that Jesus promised? Where's Jesus? Where's this Jesus now? And the devil's going to seize that, man. Yeah, where's your Jesus now? You know, yeah, you, you should have never believed in Jesus because, uh, you know, you can see now that he, he just lied to you. I mean, people are not going to be able to handle all of the confusion and everything that's going on if they believe that, they should be gone, you know, wait a second, did the rapture come, um, did I miss something, you know, well, you'll know when you see your favorite preacher still there with you, um, when you see that preacher that's teaching you that there's going to be a pre-tribulation rapture, and all this stuff is taking place that Jesus said we were going to see happening, and we're going through hell on earth, literal hell on earth, um, yeah, then what, you know, so, um, my encouragement to you is beware, be on your guard, trust in the Lord, know that his promises are true, that he has not forsaken us and will not forsake us. Hold fast to this truth, all right, that Jesus Christ is Lord, all right, to the glory of God the Father, and know that his promises to be with us and never leave us or forsake us so that we may boldly say, I will not fear what man will do unto me, you know. I trust the Lord. I know that no matter what happens, if a Muslim brigade breaks in my door right now and says, you got to stop preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, uh, confess Allah or die, I'm going to take the gun, put it to my head, and pull the trigger myself. I'm not even going to give them the pleasure of shooting me. I'll, in the name of Jesus... And I'll 
stick my thumb in the trigger myself. I'm going to die for Jesus. If I have to, I will die for Jesus. Will you die for Jesus? You know, the disciples died for Jesus. Um, many people since have died for Jesus. People like William Tyndale died for Jesus so that we could have these beautiful Bibles. We wouldn't even have them if it wasn't for men like William Tyndale. Um, you know, um, what is, you know, going to be your test? Uh, I would be willing to bet that they thought that they were in the tribulation period because uh, of all the Catholic persecution um, during the Renaissance period. And, and uh, uh, I would be willing to bet that Christians that were underground uh, from the first to the fourth century I'd be willing to bet that they thought they were going through the tribulation period. They were hiding and running for their lives, passing off, you know, the manuscripts from one place to the to next, but worshiping from house to house. They probably thought they were near the end. But here we are, you know, over 2,000 years later, still preaching the same truth. Why? Because it hasn't happened yet. But it's coming. Be ready. Um, don't be surprised if it happens in your lifetime. Don't be caught off guard. Don't be caught with your pants down either. Hallelujah. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. Um, this has gone longer than I um, had hoped to, but uh, I hope and pray that it's a blessing to you. I hope and pray that you listen to it all and that you take heed. Take heed because the time is near. Take heed, because the time is near. Jesus loves you. I love you. I hope that's a blessing to you. Pastor Joe, I hope that answers your question. Uh, there's so much more to look at. Um, I would encourage you to um, look for the places in Scripture where it talks about the three and a half years and the three and a half years. I believe you're going to find that in Revelation, and you're going to find some of that in uh, the books of Ezekiel and maybe even in Daniel. But um, you're, you'll find the references that point to that. There's a reason for that three and a half year period, um, for that seven year period to be broken in two. And, uh, um, you know, um, I believe that what I've shown you today is enough evidence to prove to you that there will be a mid-tribulation rapture. Hey, um, that's it for me. I'm done. Um, God bless you all, everybody. Um, have a great evening. In Jesus' name.